Wouldn't you agree that words are very powerful? They are a mirror into your heart and tells listeners how you think. The words you choose to express your thoughts are very important. Choosing the right words is crucial in rightly communicating thoughts across without ambiguity. When you use the wrong words, you risk leaving a negative impression. However, the correct choice of words has the ability to elevate you, creating lasting good impressions and can even hold you in high regard. In this video, I will share with you 15 words you should start using to help you sound more elegant, classy and refined. These words will help you express yourself more elegantly by substituting some mundane, uninteresting everyday words with their elegant sounding synonyms you will improve your elegance in speech in no time please bear in mind however that you need to use these words in their right context and learn how to pronounce them correctly in order to achieve positive results my wonderful elegance ladies welcome back to my channel my name is vivian and i am the founder of woman of elegance which is a platform i've created to help women globally become the most elegant classy and refined women that they can be if you haven't already done so please do consider subscribing to this channel and sharing this video with friends you think will benefit from it so without further ado let's get straight into the video Firstly, let's start off with some basics. It amazes me when I'm out in public, let's say in a cafe, and the server asks, for example, would you like some cream in your coffee? And the customer responds with a terse, no. The lack of basic words to convey good manners is so disappointing. I've said time and time again that elegance is not about how many designer clothes you can afford or how much money you have in the bank. One of the fundamental key areas of elegance is having good manners and knowing how to treat people with respect. And this is so easy to do but it's something that is greatly overlooked. I want us to change this narrative so ladies please start incorporating basic polite words into your vocabulary as a bare minimum. So having said that, the first point of our list of 15 elegant words you should start using to sound elegant are words or phrases popularly known as polite words. Yes, the same polite words that your parents and your teachers insisted you use at all times when you were a child. Those words are very important in your daily interactions with others. When you use them, you sound cultured, elegant and refined. Include please, Thank you, you're welcome, pardon me, excuse me, may I help you, I would like, please may I have. As basic as these may be, they are often the fine line between elegance and insolence. When you habitually use these words, they'll become second nature to whoever you're speaking to, whether it's to a janitor or a CEO. The next word on my list is gracefully. Gracefully means a way characterised by elegance or beauty or form, movement, manner or speech. If you use the word gracefully when speaking, your listeners are bound to visualise you in the same light. Their mental image of you captures a lady who is graceful and elegant. For example, the sentence, she gently strolled down the street, doesn't quite paint the same picture of an elegant woman as the sentence, she gracefully strolled down the street. Instead of saying, you dance really well, say, you dance gracefully. The word gracefully can also be used in place of with ease or easily. For example, she came down the tree with ease. You could say, she gracefully came down the tree. Again, this is a good word to use instead of basic ones such as easily. The third word on my list is perhaps. To sound more elegant and learned, use perhaps instead of maybe. The adverbs perhaps and maybe mean the same thing and are used to convey uncertainty or a possibility. You use these words to say that something is possible or maybe true, but you're not certain. However, the word perhaps is a little more formal and sounds more elegant too. So instead of saying maybe she will accept the proposal, you could say perhaps she will accept the proposal. Perhaps can also be used at the beginning, middle or end of a sentence. For example, perhaps she will come again. Will you travel tomorrow? I don't know, perhaps. Or perhaps she may have a change of mind. And this sounds better than maybe she will change her mind. The fourth word on my list is contrite. 
Contrite is a word seldom used and can be elegantly placed in a sentence instead of sorry or even the heavier remorseful. Contrite means somebody is regretful of their actions and wants to make amends. Instead of saying Kelly was sorry, you could say Kelly was contrite and she began a campaign of atonement. Contrite is a more interesting and more specific word than merely saying sorry, which is so overused in contemporary language and quite frankly has too many meanings. If somebody wants to make a memorable linguistic impression and be more direct in their language, contrite is a great word when one means somebody is apologetic rather than just sorry. The fifth word on my list is admire. The word admire means to regard with deep respect and appreciation. Use admire instead of like to express that you regard something or someone with respect or warm approval. So instead of saying, I like your tenacity or I envy your tenacity, you could say, I admire your tenacity. Instead of saying, I envy the strong bond with your sister, you could say, I admire the strong bond you share with your sister. Admire has a stronger meaning than just like or even love and it sounds more academic. The sixth word on my list is exquisite. The pronunciation of exquisite alone sounds so elegant. Exquisite is used to describe something beautiful, delicate and pleasing to the senses. You can use exquisite instead of beautiful. For example, the spa at the hotel is exquisite. You can also use this word to emphasise and add an elegance flair to your descriptions. For example, rather than just saying, you are very beautiful, you could say, you are exquisitely beautiful. Another tasteful and elegant word to add to your vocabulary. The seventh word on my list is lack. I really like the word lack because it is a very short monosyllabic word that conveys strong meaning without saying too much. It's the perfect less is more word, no pun intended. So the word lack means to not have or not have enough of something that is needed or wanted. Lack means the same thing as do not have or does not have, but you sound more coherent and intelligent when you use lack instead. For instance, she suspects he took the money, but she lacks proof. This sounds more coherent than she suspects he took the money but she does not have proof. You could say he just lacks the courage to start afresh and this sounds smarter than he just doesn't have the courage to start afresh. Another example, what I don't have is enough space to store my things. Whereas you could say what I lack is enough space to store my things. Ladies, I hope you're taking notes. If you've reached this far in the video, please write taking notes in the comment section i would love to interact with you please stay with me i would love you to reach the end of this video because these are words that can really elevate your vocabulary the eighth word on my list is whimsical you would refer to a person or an idea as whimsical if they're unusual playful and unpredictable rather than serious and practical you can say henry has a whimsical personality instead of saying henry is funny Another example in which you can use the word whimsical is in a film if it's playful or fanciful, especially if it's appealing and amusing. You could say that film was whimsical or that was a whimsical film instead of saying that it was a funny film or amusing. Also, if a meeting ended with jokes and laughter, you could say that the meeting ended on a whimsical note. Word number nine, endear. To endear means to cause someone to be liked by another person. So if you endear yourself to someone, you cause them to like you. Use the word endear instead of attract when referring to another individual. For example, it sounds more graceful to say she endeared herself to him in a very short space of time than to say he became attracted to her in a very short space of time. It's a word you would typically find in 18th century dramas such as Jane Austen novels. His kindness endeared him to many people. The tenth word on my list is bespoke. The word bespoke refers to a tailor-made product according to the needs of an individual customer. Use bespoke instead of custom-made or custom-fit or tailor-made. For example, instead of saying my wedding dress was sewn to my taste, you could say my wedding gown was bespoke. This means that it was designed and made for you and your taste. We can offer you a bespoke solution that meets your unique needs. 
Another example, the clothing boutique is a combination of designer and bespoke garments. Again, it's all about using particular words to convey as much meaning as possible. The 11th word on my list is impeccable. This word is commonly used to acknowledge that something or someone is perfect and without flaws. It can also be used to commend someone for something that they've done. So rather than saying, thank you for executing the project perfectly, you could say, thank you for your impeccable execution of the project. Another example, that was an impeccable performance instead of saying, that was a very good performance. Her dress sense is impeccable rather than saying, her sense of style is fabulous. The 12th words on my list are ladies slash gentlemen. Between a person who addresses a group of women as ladies and ones who addresses them as guys or girls, who would you consider to be elegant? Very likely it's the one who uses the words ladies and gentlemen. Addressing people properly and with respect is a sign that you are courteous and elegant too. Start using ladies and gentlemen more often. They can be used both in informal and formal occasions. You just need to adjust your tone of voice to suit the occasion. Instead of saying, hey guys, say ladies if talking to women and gentlemen if talking to men or ladies and gentlemen for a mixed group. Word number 13, magnificent. The use of the word magnificent refers to something or someone when it has unusual, impressive appearance or qualities such as size or beauty. That dress looks magnificent on you. In your mind, it may sound exaggerated because you probably don't use these on a daily basis, but the point is to become accustomed to using these words so that they become more natural to use. The penultimate word on my list is surreal. The word surreal conveys something that is bizarre or otherworldly. If you think of the art movement, surrealism, by artists such as Salvador Dali or Jean Arp, you are immediately taken into a world that doesn't exist, almost imaginary. However, expressions that are used to convey this concept are quite often used. For example, take the sentence, the choir's rendition of the song was out of this world. This is used to describe the song as being so incredible, it's almost impossible to be that good. Well, instead of saying this, you could simply say, the choir's rendition of the song was surreal. When something seems strange, unreal, or like a dream, you could refer to it as being surreal. So use the adjective surreal in place of strange or dreamlike. For example, instead of saying, the inside of the building was beautiful and somehow strange, say, the inside of the building was beautiful and seems surreal. The last word on my list is ostensible. Ostensible is a fantastic word to use when one wants to use the word seemingly. However, ostensible is quite academic and serious, so one should use it sparingly and carefully, otherwise it may come across as pretentious and perhaps insincere. Ostensible is a heavyweight word, meaning something outwardly appearing one way, but in fact being another thing altogether. For example, John arrived at the party ostensibly to support Mary for his celebration, but his real intentions were to gather information for gossip. The word ostensible is great for discussions on theories and ideas, so elegant people can use it for more serious or more highbrow discussions instead of using seemingly or apparently all the time. Again, this is a bold, firm word which sounds sturdy and is a great signifier of intellect and high capability. Ladies, I hope you found this list of 15 words useful so it can spur you on to increase your vocabulary to enable you to sound more elegant, classy and refined. Thank you very much for watching.